The subject of this video relates to the process of automatic shimming of the PicoSpin 45 NMR spectrometer. In this video, we'll discuss maintenance shimming, a standard procedure for keeping your instrument working at its best. A different shimming procedure is needed after cartridge change or repairs. Refer to the user guide for those procedures. You should follow this maintenance shimming procedure whenever your signal peak height is degraded and your instrument has begun to lose resolution and sensitivity. Until you have experience with the unit, we recommend that you use this procedure daily before you use the instrument. If you are able to keep the unit powered on all the time, you may find after you have gained some experience that you can shim it less often than once a day, or you may need to shim it more often if your spectrometer has been moved or power cycled frequently. We'll revisit many of the parameters we discussed in the Zoom Search video, such as the transmit frequency, the bandwidth and post filter attenuation, the maximum number of points to plot, the maximum time to plot, and how to size the spectrum window. In this video, we'll also explore the topic of shimming using the AutoShim script. We'll describe various parameters, their meaning and optimum values for shimming, and we'll examine the text displayed in the scrolling text window, as well as the time and frequency domain plots. A written description of the information contained in this video can be found in the System Maintenance section of the PicoSpin 45 User Manual under the heading titled Shimming. These documents are located under the documentation section of the support page of our website at www.picospin.com. Both HTML and PDF versions of the documentation are available. We're going to discuss a lot of detail so you'll really understand what is happening when you shim your instrument. After you're familiar with the system, you'll find that keeping the unit in good shim is very simple. You just load the auto shim script, adjust the center frequency, and hit the start run button. We learned in the zoom search movie that when changing the bandwidth, the post filter attenuation parameter also needs to be adjusted. With a larger bandwidth, we can look at a larger spectral window, and this helps us to locate our signal. We also learned how to adjust the transmit frequency in order to move the NMR signal within our spectral window. This will be something we find ourselves doing regularly whenever we use the PicoSpin spectrometer. In this video we're going to look at the auto shim script again, but this time we're going to use it to shim our instrument. Before we begin, let's inject a fresh sample of water into the cartridge, making sure not to inject air bubbles. You can monitor the waste tube to ensure a steady stream of fluid is passing through the cartridge. Also, be sure to cap both the inlet and outlet fittings after injection. Let's start by navigating to the run page and making sure we're in the auto shim script. If you're not already on the run page, simply select run in the upper right hand corner of the user interface. This will refresh the screen and take you to the last script that you were using. If this isn't the auto shim script, then navigate over to the scripts button and select it. A pop-up window will appear displaying three factory default scripts, auto shim, one pulse, and search. We want to select the auto shim script. The values that appear in the parameter fields will be the last ones used in the script. Next, we want to make sure that the test run option is selected. If it isn't, then simply check this box. We'll uncheck this option later when we're ready to do a full shim. Now execute the auto shim script by clicking on the start run button. What this will do is give us an FID and a spectrum plot to look at. Now let's take a look at some of the parameters we'll need to consider for shimming. The transmit frequency is the excitation energy used to excite our nuclei. By adjusting this frequency, we can reposition our signal to the left or right of the center frequency in the spectrum window. For shimming, we need to place our signal within plus or minus 500 hertz of the center frequency. We'll adjust our signal's position shortly. If we navigate to the shims button and select it, a new user interface field will appear. The parameters on the right hand side are normalized shim coil current values. The PicoSpin capillary cartridge has nine shim coils, three linear gradient coils, five quadratic coils and a B0 offset field. The currents which are applied to these coils correct for inhomogeneities present in the applied magnetic field and inhomogeneities introduced by the cartridge. Let's hide the shim values user interface for the time being. We'll come back to this user interface later after we've shimmed our instrument and want to save our optimized shim values to a named file. So let's refresh our memory on some of the parameters we'll need to adjust. The AutoShim script executes a simplex optimization algorithm. This algorithm systematically adjusts the shim coil currents one at a time and monitors the effect these changes have on the intensity of the spectrum signal after each adjustment. We control the number of evaluations of the simplex algorithm by adjusting the value of the max iterations parameter. 
The test run box allows us to override the execution of the optimization loop of the AutoShim script. Checking the test run box turns off the programming loop, thus allowing us to execute a single RF pulse. This is particularly handy for evaluating the current state of the magnet shim, as well as for discovering and positioning our signal. The next two parameter fields, linear increments and quadratic increments, are the step sizes the algorithm will use to adjust the shim coil current values. The next important parameter for shimming is the pulse width. The pulse width is the length of time the transmitter is turned on in order to produce a 90 degree tip angle. The 90 degree pulse width value is measured in microseconds and varies from instrument to instrument. Please refer to the test report documentation shipped with your instrument for the correct value. We're going to leave this value set to the test report value. After that, we have the parameters acquisition points and zero filling. Acquisition points is the number of points of the time domain to acquire. With a 4 kHz bandwidth, we can acquire up to 4,000 points. For shimming, we collect 1,000 points. Zero filling helps get rid of digital artifacts, improves spectral resolution and line shape, and ensures that we're evaluating the true signal intensity. For shimming, we zero fill our data up to 8,000 points. Another important parameter is the T1 recovery delay. Here it is set to 8 seconds. This means there is an 8 second delay between each pulse that is executed. We have our bandwidth set to 4 kHz and a corresponding post filter attenuation value of 10. As we saw in the zoom search video, when changing the bandwidth, one must also change the associated post filter attenuation setting. The phase correction and exponential filter parameter fields are set to zero. We don't use either of these parameters for shimming. The number of points we'll plot is 1000. This is equal to the number of points we're going to acquire. And since we're looking at 1000 points out of a 4 kHz bandwidth, the time of the FID we can acquire is 250 milliseconds. We can leave the minimum and maximum frequency to plot set to minus 2000 and plus 2000 Hz. We'll adjust these values later, but for now let's leave them set to the maximum frequency range for this bandwidth. Now that we're familiar with all the parameters needed for shimming, we can move on to part 2 of this video which describes running the AutoShim script. So let's get started with shimming. 